Welcome to Isadora Tutorial 2. In the previous tutorial, we did the very basics, learning how the structure of Isadora works, and we learned how to play a movie and do some basic manipulation. In this tutorial, we're going to take that further. You're going to learn how to manipulate the size and position of an image. You're going to be able to composite those images and control the blending of them. And we'll do a very, very basic kind of interactive control using the mouse as a sensor. It's worth mentioning that the ability to resize and reposition the images is a major one, especially for those of you who work in professional theater. As you know, as you go from one technical rehearsal to the next, from one venue to the next, every setup is completely different. And the fact that you can almost instantly resize and reposition the images and customize it to a certain venue, that's a really useful feature. So let's dive in. So we've seen how to change parameters by typing, but really that's not the most efficient way to do it. There's two other ways to change parameters inside of Isadora, which I want to show you now. One way is to click on the dot to the left of any numeric input. So for instance, here I'm going to click on the dot to the left of the words play start in the movie player. When I do, I get a little slider. And you can see that I can simply now drag the slider up and down, and I'm changing the play start position. So this is a quick and dirty way of making an adjustment to one of the values, and you can instantly see the result on the stage. The second way, if you need more precision, is to click on the number and hold the mouse button down and then drag up or down. Now if you do that, the values will change in tenths of a percent. So this is a way to actually very quickly change a parameter and you'll probably find that as you come to know the program, this is the way you'll do it most often. If you need to be super precise, you can hold down the shift key and click and then drag up or down and then it will go in one one hundredths of a percent. One of the things that I want to work with next, we've been changing some of the temporal properties of the movie. We've been changing what part of the movie is looping and how long the loop is. I want to do something with the actual image itself. So I'm going to go over here to the projector and the first thing I'm going to do is change the zoom input. I'm going to click on the number 100 with my mouse and drag down until that number reads somewhere around 25% quite make it so I do it one more time and get it to be 25. So now you can see that I've resized the image that the dancer is only occupying 25 percent of the entire size of the stage. Again everything is expressed in a percentage. So one important point is that I could instantly resize this image and not only can I resize it I can actually reposition it. So if I click on the number zero to the left of the word left I can then move it left and right inside of the stage and I can click on the number zero to the left of the word top and move it up and down. So in other words, using Isadora I can easily resize an image and put it exactly where I would like it to be inside of the stage. I'm going to show you an interesting way to be able to do that and it actually introduces the concept of interactivity in the absolutely most basic way. I want you to click on group number five which is the mouse and keyboard group. These are actors that have to do with reading the input from the mouse or the keyboard of your computer. You'll see that there's a module called Mouse Watcher. So I'm going to click on that and bring it into the scene. And you'll notice that as I move my cursor around the screen, the numbers at the output of the Mouse Watcher are changing. If I move the cursor all the way to the top left, it reads 0, 0. As I move the cursor across to the right, that number uh, at the horizontal position output is getting larger and larger until I get all the way to the right and it's 100. So again, the width of the screen expressed as a percentage. If I take the cursor and move it down along the right edge, now you'll see that the vertical position output is going up to 100. So basically, it's just giving you the coordinates of where the mouse is at any given moment. But what we can do is use this to control the position of the image interactively. So I'm going to click on the dot to the right of the words horizontal position in the mouse watcher and connect that to the left input of the projector. Then I'm going to click on the vertical position output and connect that to the top input of the projector. Once I've done that, you'll see that as I move my cursor around the screen, the image is moving around the stage to follow it. So now I have the ability to use my mouse to quickly and easily move the image anywhere I would like it onto the stage. Now, of course, the issue is, let's say we were using that to set up a show. You don't actually want it moving all the time. You want to control when you make the choice to move it. 
There's a nice feature in the mouse watcher called the modifiers input. This allows you to choose so that some of the modifier keys in the keyboard, meaning shift, control, option, can be used to control whether the mouse watcher sees the mouse moving. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the modifiers input field and type CTL and hit return. That's a shortcut for control key. Yeah? Notice now I'm moving the mouse, nothing's happening in the mouse watcher. But if I hold down the control key, then it's tracking. So now I have the ability to get the image just where I want it, and then I let go of the control key, and I move my mouse, nothing's happening. Here we've got a simple system where we can easily position an image inside of the frame. Let's say in this scene that what we'd really like to do is play two movies. That's also very easy to do. I'm going to click out here in the gray uh, area to the left of the movie player, and I'm going to drag a selection rectangle around the projector, mouse watcher, and the movie player. When I release that, they turn blue to indicate that they're selected. Now I can simply go to the Edit menu and say Duplicate. And now I've got another complete system. Now at this moment, the two images are in exactly the same place, although they're slightly out of phase here, and they're playing the same movie. But what I want you to do is on the second movie player here, click on the input to the left of the word movie in the movie player and type the number one which is the movie called Bubbles.move, and hit return. Now we've got two images. We've got the Bubbles movie and the Dancer movie playing at the same time, but they're still in the same place. The other thing I want you to do is we're going to change the modifiers input of the mouse watcher. So I click there, and instead of CTL for control, I'm going to type SHF for shift. Once I've done that, I've got two completely separate systems one that uses the control key to move the dancer image and one that uses the shift key to move the bubbles image. So now I'm going to hold down my control key, I'm going to move the dancer down here to the right, and then I'm going to hold down the shift key and I'm going to move the image over here to the left. Using this simple setup, you've got really quite an amazing way to be able to very, very quickly, especially in a rehearsal or a performance situation when you're setting up, to get images placed exactly where you want them. You may have noticed that when the images were on top of each other, which I'm going to do again right now, I'm going to move this one in the center, and I'll move the dancer there too, that they're basically being added together. That is, one image is just being accumulated into the other, and so you get a combined image. So sometimes it's the case that you want to have layering. The default mode for the projector you can see here is additive, here and here. And that means it's going to add the two images together. But if I go to the blend mode, I'm going to change this in both projectors to transparent. You can do this, by the way, when you have a word like that, all I have to do is type T and hit return. It'll figure out which word I mean. Notice that as soon as I changed it to transparent, I no longer see the dancer. And that's because the bubbles in the image is in front of the dancer image now, and we can't see it. The default way, when you don't specify which layer something is on, is that the actors that are higher in the scene are rendered first. That means the dancer is being drawn first, and then the bubbles is being drawn, so we don't see the dancer because it's actually down here. It's lower in the actual scene editor. But you can control this explicitly using the layer input of the projectors. So for instance, if I change the layer on the dancer image, which is up here, and I change it to 1 instead of 0, now the dancer is in front of the bubbles movie. Right? So that one is blocking the other one. And you can see that a little bit better if I move this image around. Right? Notice that the dancer image has a black background, so we're still seeing the outline of that rectangle. The word transparent may seem kind of odd here because, in fact, one is blocking the other. But the beautiful thing is, is that, in fact, you can control how transparent an image is using the intensity input on the projector. I'm going to click on the dot to the left of the word intensity, and I'm going to fade the dancer image out. So you can see by controlling this that I can choose how much of that I'm going to see. So using the layer inputs and the blend modes, you can actually control how these images layer on top of each other and do very sophisticated compositing inside of a scene.